Welcome back everyone to our next installment of the Countdown to D-Day 75. I am Dr. Keith Huxon, Senior Director of Research and History here at the National World War II Museum. And we're standing in our Italian campaign gallery. You might ask, well, what does that have to do with D-Day? I wanted to bring up the initiative that the museum has launched for a master's degree in World War II studies with Arizona State University. And one of the readings I'm assigning in that class, you can see here Mark Perry's Partners in Command about the relationship between General George Marshall and Dwight Eisenhower, gives some insight into why Anzio was important to the preparations being made for the Overlord operation. Eisenhower arrived in London on January the 15th, as we noted last week, 1944, 75 years ago, January the 22nd, 1944, a week later, you had the landings at Anzio, 35,000 troops. Now, if you look at what happened at Anzio, essentially the American commanders, led by Mark Clark, thought that they had made a great success at Anzio with the initial landings, that they had caught the Germans completely by surprise. But they did not make a rapid advance towards Rome, which was the ultimate political goal of the Anzio landings. They wanted, they thought, to be cautious and be cohesive, but Albert Kesselring, the German commander, had some different ideas. Namely, he came down from, the, uh, from Rome to the Alban Hills surrounding Rome and was able to look out over the plains towards the landing at Anzio. He saw the Allies out there, and he realized that he knew his enemy, they were not being very aggressive. And this gave him time to move some divisions down from northern Italy, who could then get on those low areas that look down onto the beach, from the plains down to the beach, and begin to literally just start blasting away at the Americans and the British down there. This is what in fact happened beginning January the 25th. Very quickly, Anzio turned into a catastrophe. I thought I would read you a little bit of what Mark Perry had to say about the situation and Dwight Eisenhower's frame of mind when he regarded Anzio as it became clear that this operation was not going as planned, quote, it was no wonder that Eisenhower simmered with anger. Anzio was not Tarawa or Salerno, it was worse. Allied commanders failed to exploit their tactical opportunities, squandered American and British air assets, underestimated the tenacity of the enemy, misused their armor, and overestimated the impact power of their command units. Allied commanders seem more interested in bacon and eggs than in offensive actions. That's what Mark Clark and uh, uh, his commander had uh, for breakfast on the initial landings on the beach there. Now, the reason this is so important is that it caused a big rift between Marshall and Eisenhower as they tried to make preparations for Overlord with the British. They got into arguments because Anzio was not going well. Eisenhower had expected 263 LSTs, landing ship tanks, to be freed up from the Anzio operation to then be sent from the Mediterranean for his use in planning the invasion of Normandy. This was not going to happen the way things were shaping up in January, February 1944. It was, in fact, between Eisenhower and Marshall, one of the low points of their relationship. There's more to be said about this, but uh, maybe in the future, if you want to learn more, you can either take our class with Arizona State University, the museum's partnership there, or read some more about it in the various histories that are out there of this, uh, of this time period. But so, Looking forward down the line, Eisenhower who would have a great many more challenges to overcome, and we'll be talking more about these as we move towards the countdown to the 75th anniversary of D-Day.